All right, yogis, we're here for another Mindful Monday practice. I'm Autumn from Ambuja Yoga. If you don't know me, here I am, uh, the face that goes with the name and the brand. I'm so grateful that you're here. I always am so blown away by the amazing people that show up each and every practice, each and every retreat, each and every experience. Today's practice is actually a pranayama practice called Brahmari. Um, it's a little bit funny, it's a little bit fun. I love this practice because it can kind of shift the energy a little bit. The vibration of it just kind of shifts things a little. It can be grounding because it's kind of like a low, almost droning sound. And it's also uplifting because it has that, the vibration and you can really feel it in your skull. So it's kind of fun. We'll, I'll guide you through it a few times without the mudra, and then I'll add the mudra in. The practice Brahmari, it's called, it means bumblebee breath because it sounds like a bumblebee. You essentially take a big breath in, and then as you exhale, you hum, and it's kind of a lower hum. You can do it in any tone that feels good and right for you, though it doesn't really matter. So you'll take a big breath in, and then you hum. Mm -hmm. And you can add the rocking of the jaw back and forth for this practice. The rocking of the jaw modulates the sound, it modulates the vibration, and the mudra really amplifies the practice, really turns our focus and our awareness, our drishti, that inner and outer drishti, turns it inward and amplifies the effects and the benefits of this breath practice. So let's go ahead and dive in. We'll take the first five rounds with no mudra. And then the last five rounds, we'll add the Shanmukhi mudra. The Shanmukhi mudra is a mudra that is meant to close off the five gates of perception, your senses, basically. I'm gonna show you the mudra first before we dive in to that section. So it comes a little bit easier because it does take a little bit of explaining to do. You'll close down the ears and then you close down the eyes with your fingertips toward the inner eye on your eyelids. The middle fingers will rest kind of on the bridge of your nose here on either side. Ring fingers will go above the lips and the middle fingers go just below. So it looks like this. As you practice, and remember that while we are practicing Brahmari, we're breathing in through the nose. And as we breathe out, we are also rocking the jaw. Like so. Take a moment to find a comfortable seat. Sit nice and tall. So your spine is long. So you're lifting through the crown of your head, your energy centers, your chakras are aligned. Your spine is long. That central nadi that runs along your spine is lengthened long. Hmm. Take a big breath in through your nose. And then sigh it out through the mouth. Again, breathe in. And exhale, let it go. Let's do one more, just like that. Audibly sigh out, so you're already practicing to make, make that audible sound. Breathe in. And exhale, let it go. Great. Breathe in through your nose. Begin to hum and rock your jaw as you exhale, trying to make that exhale as long as possible. Fill up. 
two rounds before we add the mudra breathe in a normal breath. All right, we'll take five more rounds. This time we'll add in that Shanmukhi Mudra. And you'll really notice that closing down the senses really amplifies that vibration in your skull. So let's close down the ears. Index finger to the inner eye. Middle finger to the bridge of your nose. Ring finger above the lips. Pinky fingers below. Breathe in. one. moment to be in the vibration. We're noticing how you feel here in this moment. Open your eyes. Let's maybe you keep a soft gaze for a moment. If this practice resonated with you, you could practice it for a longer amount of time, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I sometimes like to practice it after, say, doing like a restorative yoga practice. I can kind of bring, for me, it helps bring my energy kind of back up to like a nice, like more balanced baseline. You can also practice it before bed too, and it can kind of bring you back down. So it's really nice, like balancing breath. Um, yoga teachers. This is a great practice to incorporate into your yoga classes. If you have students that are maybe a little bit more resistant to chanting, to mantra work, it helps them open up that throat chakra, which 
as we all know, when we can open up that throat chakra, we can communicate better. Um, we honor our truth more. We speak with integrity. So it's a great practice to incorporate, whether you're working in group classes or maybe you have some one-on-one -on -one clients too that you can kind of weave that in. It's a great transformative practice for them. All right. Once again, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel if you'd like to get more of these or hop on the newsletter. Right? You'll get practices like this delivered to your inbox every single week. You'll also be the first to know about all my upcoming retreats. Um, there's a bunch coming up in the pipeline. So I would love, love, love to have you on a retreat. Um, we really kind of dive in and begin to transform lives. It's really cool. All right. Thanks again. Namaste.